Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosandcolor.com and today we're going to be taking a quick look at Lightroom at the most basic functions and how I took this photo here and turned it into this photo in just a few steps. So let's see how what I did to this photograph. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we are only going to be looking over here at the basic panel. Okay, so we drop that down here and we're only be going to be looking at these very few settings over here and what we can do. The first thing you always, I always want to do is look at the white balance. Now, if you hit W, okay, that's going to bring up your eyedropper. Now, something to remember about the white balance is it's gonna completely change how your image looks depending on where you click. So if you click on something blue, the image is going to be turning yellow, like so. Now if I hit W again and I select something green, you see the image is going to go to blue. Now that's the white balance. So you can see here on the sliders over here, this is going to help you with this. You can see blue and yellow and pink and green. So if you select on something blue, it's going to end up at the yellow end of the slider. Select something pink, it's gonna end up at the green side and vice versa. So if we select something green over here-ish, you see it moves up to the pink. Okay, we select a skin tone um, like so, which is more pinkish, that slider is going to move back down. Okay, so um, you always want to find something which is gray or um, kind of a shade of white or something that should be white. So in this image, I'm just going to reset this. In this image, you can see that it's it's got a little bit of a green tone to it at the moment. So I want to take that away. Now there's lots of different colors, but nothing white. Now I know that this model, Naomi Grace, she has beautiful white teeth, okay? So I can actually come all the way in by using my navigator up here and go three to one, which is gonna take me all the way in and I can actually sample the white balance, so I hit W, and I use her teeth, you can see how the tone here is a little bit yellow, by selecting that, it's going to make that my white balance. Now when I zoom back out by clicking, you can see the difference, if I look at the before and after, now, you see, now it's gone towards the blues, but it's a lot more even tone. Okay, now other settings you can do here, uh, if you click up here where it says custom, because we've just gone to that, if we went to as shot, this was how it was how it came in before. Or we've got auto where it does it itself, but you see it hasn't done a very good job here, and often Lightroom doesn't. Um, and it's just to do with there's so many different tones in this image, it doesn't know where to look. You've got daylight, which does a fairly good job, actually. It brings out all the tones because I shot in the daylight. There's cloudy or shade, so shade should make it accurate. Here it's gonna always warm it up when you look at those things. And then you go down to tungsten and fluorescent, which is gonna completely change the look of the photograph. So I'm gonna come back down to the custom one that we selected. And I'm actually gonna go in and just do that again, just to make sure. There we go. And I'm fairly happy with that, although I am gonna warm it up just a little bit like so. I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing we're going to do, okay, now sometimes I hit auto over on this right-hand panel, which is going to set the exposure, the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, and also the contrast of the image. So we hit auto. And on this image, it's made a lot of differences, and this can actually help me to see where I might want to go. Now, after that, I usually press Command Z to put it back to where it was. So I can now look at exactly what I want to do. Now, I don't always start off with exposure. With this one, I know that my shadow's here, and the whole of her, she's a little bit in shadow. Okay, but I don't want to lose, I don't want to blow out this background. So, if I was to hit exposure here, to lighten her up, now she looks great with the clothes, but we've lost the background, okay? So what I'm actually going to do, double click on the word exposure brings it back to zero. I'm actually going to look at the shadows, and I'm going to lift the shadows, and you can see only the shaded section, the shadows have been lifted here. Now I think that looks really, really great now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, the whites, because we can see here, the whites again, we can lift the whites, or we can reduce the whites dep depending on what we want, okay? Now I'm actually going to boost these whites a little bit as well, just by lifting them. And we can already see, 
But what I've done is I've actually lost a little up here the blue, the beautiful blue sky. So this is when I'm going to come back to my exposure and I'm just going to pull this back. Okay, and I've gone back to 60 and you can see the difference now from the beginning to the end is what we've already got. Now I'm not completely happy with this now. I just want to um, knock these blacks down a little bit, okay? Just to bring the blacks back in because we got rid of the shadows so much. In fact, I'm gonna boost the shadows a little more. And you can see by doing this, I've added a little contrast and it's a little bit um, looking like an HDR kind of an image. And we can really do that by, all you need to do is take the highlights down, the shadows up and it looks a little bit HDR. This is too much for what I'm looking for. So I'm actually going to bring those highlights back in again to keep it looking natural. And that's basically it. All I've done there is change these few settings and I've gone from this image to this image in a few very simple steps. Now, what I would like to say is you can actually do this in whichever order you feel. They're put in this order so that you can kind of do it yourself. Now, working straight down is always a really good idea because they put are put in order. Just be careful of just using the exposure because you're just affecting the center of the image. I will be making a another video all about the histogram because this is what we need to be watching is up here that all of our image isn't up one end or it isn't down the other end of the histogram but that one will come later okay so that has been my tutorial on the very basics of what that side panel does and how i've used it to edit this specific photo so this has been ed gregory for photos in color please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the button below and also go over to the website and look at some of our other blogs and fun things that are going on over there, like our photo of the day competition. If you haven't got our free photography guide to taking better travel photos, you should go over to the website right now and do it. It's really simple. All you do is go to photosincolor.com, find this box on the right hand side, type in your first name, your last name and your email address and I will send you this amazing free guide to taking better travel photos photographs via email here it is just here with great travel tips like ignore tourists or using creative focus to create better photos so just sign up right now 